the Aegis 108 mic here. This is the, uh, the TTR, and uh, got it in bits at the moment. I'm just putting, getting a um, rear shocker done up, just getting it re-gas, uh, serviced, and uh, I, I uh, was just showing him, saying about that nut. Now that's the fair enough. This is a lot bigger bike. This is a 250 and a lot more heavy duty. But there's your big nut on your counter shaft that I was talking about. Um, to me, that's a much better idea because that doesn't allow the sprocket, the front sprocket, to move it all on the splines, and you've actually got it locked up. I'll just show you if I can spin that over. Uh, you can actually not be able to see it. Just, well, you probably can't see it. I'll bring it back around to there. There's a lock and tab on that there, on the top of that nut. So that locks up so you can't move it um, when you change them out, when you swap those front sprockets for a new one or whatever, you've probably got a rattle gun that off. They're not, they're not a lot easy to get off, but... And I'm pretty sure this old Suzuki, yes, the old Suzuki here, there's the SP370. She's got a uh, counter shaft nut on it too. Uh, same deal, a locker, and this IT, the IT here, oh, look at that, would you? Oh, I do really like Yamahas, I've got to say. They're, um, they're probably my favourite bike, um, as far as the older stuff goes, and, and the reason why, and I, I can't say, I can say the same about the Suzuki, actually. Um, just have a look at the size of that rear hub there. Now that has, that is massive, there's my hand, and the brake pads on that, brake shoes on those, oh, fair enough I know they're a drum brake, but they're absolutely massive. What I was saying about the three bearings, so on your, on your sprocket side, on these, there's two wheel bearings side by side, and one on the brakes, brake hub side. Just things like that, that I think are extremely good with the Yamaha. Um, little things, you know, that a lot of people mightn't think that, that is much, but just to have those bigger, bigger brakes and, and really big wheel bearings. Uh, yeah, I'll probably, yeah, that, that sort of thing is what I like about the Yamahas. Uh, I've actually got to get that back shop serviced and regassed too. But uh, this is a beautiful old bike, this thing. Uh, I deregistered her. She's deregistered now, and uh, it's really just a collector's item for me now. Um, just get it out occasionally. Uh, it's got a, um, it's got a, uh, some sort of, it's a cover, cover over the fuel tank there. And all nice and fit, fits tightly and all Velcroed on. Tightest fit one I've seen of those covers. There's a new MX33 to go on the TTR. But uh, no, there she blows. And uh, yeah, but I'm going to leave it at that. And there's that barrel I was showing you the other day. Also there with a small chamber, small chamber 302 Cleveland head. One, one there. We've got some more over here, but that's um, been ported that one. And uh, the old closed chamber heads, and there's another closed chamber head there. It's 302 head. Just have a look at the size of the valve diameter on that, would you? Look at the size of that inlet valve, and that's a small port. Quite amazing. And there's your, there's your uh, exhaust ports here. Look at the size of them. Oh, oh, I love, I love the old Cleveland engines. Just think they're great. But anyway, I'm going to leave that. This one I make out.